just to pick up where I left off, so what would happen is, is these Dutch ships would come into port, and of course they're not really friends of the Bugis. It was a bit of a war going on. Well, the Bugis were very capable of quietly sneaking up to these ships, and then they would, they would attack these ships at night and take over the ship, kill everybody on it and take over the ship, basically. And so what would happen was is that the captains would say to their ship uh, 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 mates and everything that to keep your eyes open or the Bugis man will get you. And that has transferred, that's translated over time to you better be a good boy or the boogeyman's going to come and get you. How fascinating. So it comes from somewhere. Uh, from yeah. the old, from the old colonial days when these people were fighting, uh, colonial domination. Yes. Now, let's talk a little bit more before we get into what is happening there about the legends that are, that you found a parallelism, a similarity between legends in, uh, uh, in the Bugis culture and legends in Native American culture. Could you t- give us some examples? Well, one of the most fascinating things that I'd ever heard of about American Native culture, and a lot of people don't know this, is that there are many cultures in Native American cultures that believe that they originally came to the land on the back of a turtle. And if you look at the back of a turtle, it's very much shaped like a huge saucer. So I'd always drawn to the conclusion that, 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 that they actually literally came from somewhere else. And... These people in Walla Walla, in the village of Walla Walla, have that same um, history where they said they came here on the back of a big sea turtle. You mean in Walla Walla in, in Indonesia? In Indonesia. And, of course, so there's, there's a, a Walla Walla in Washington, too, that's named, <laughs> it, it, it's an Indian name. Yes. Yeah. And so there's, there's, all, kinds of, there's all kinds of similarities. That's just one of them. Um, uh they told me the story about um, the uh, the white buffalo woman, but they don't call it the white buffalo woman. It was a woman that came and showed them how to make peace amongst all the tribes, and that's a similar that's a similar legend that occurs in the Sioux um, uh, legend. It sure it's does. The white buffalo. Yeah. Gosh, you know, Alan, talking to you, it's it, it's really mind opening because I'm realizing as we talk that we know nothing about how this world really works, that this Eurocentric culture has made certain decisions about what must have happened in the past because they're, it's what they think is logical, and it always rolls around the same thing. Europe did it best, and, and uh, yet one gets the feeling that a very ancient and much more subtle Perhaps culture, one that is so subtle in its way of of addressing the human spirit and the human mind, that Eurocentric people like me have a very difficult time actually understanding it at all. And yet here it is. But let's let's go on now. Here you are in South Sulawesi, in the little town in the district of Sandu Batu. You were, what happened? You were told something rather strange. Well, we were told before we went, um, like my, my friends that I worked with in, with the NGO, they told me that when you pack, because it kind of happened by accident, I went out to buy a raincoat. It rains quite a bit in this part of the world. And so I went out and I bought a yellow raincoat. And my friend said, I'm sorry, you can't, you can't take that to Walla Walla. And I said, well, why not? And he says, well, it's th- you can't wear that color. So anyways, excuse me. So I thought, okay, well, what colors can I wear? They, they said, well, you can only wear black or white. You cannot wear any bright colors, no bright green, especially no yellow. And, you know, that's all you should bring. And I, and I said, well, what would happen? And they said, well, uh, people disappear. And I thought, well, that's rather a harsh way of dealing with people. Yeah. Break a taboo. You know, I thought, well, I mean, because that's what we use that term here, right? Right. And so, I th- and so I thought, well, okay, that's pretty harsh. But, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll follow the, the rules. And I, I, I mean, every part of my, everything I wore was black. 
I didn't mess around at all, and I and that's what I went and looked for, and that's what I took with me. And so we went to the village, and and uh, sure enough, people were dressed only in black and uh, white, a little bit of white here and there. Uh, and uh, I never thought much more about it, you know. I, I kind of pushed them a little bit about why this was, why I only wear this, and they said, well, you can only wear that color into the jungle. You don't wear any other color, especially yellow or kuning. They call it kuning, is, is the word for in Bahasa for yellow. And so 